Hello. I've gone back to basics. Let's not muck around this time. So, hello, welcome. If you're here for my first ever live stream on YouTube, we've tried a couple of times. Hopefully, this one is the one, the one that does it. Uh, we're going to be going over some British slang today. I'm just going to send out the 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 what do you call that? The link for the last time. I switched to my webcam camera so sorry if the quality isn't as good but we're here that's the most important thing um and let's give it a go so i'm not going to go over number <laughs> number one again did that about five or six times but here we go we're going to go with number the first one we're going to give you 10 different ones and the first one is bonkers what do you think bonkers means uh bonkers what do you think What do you think bonkers means? So I put it in the chat if you wanna if you wanna chuck it in. Chuck in what you feel. You feel what you feel. What you feel will be the what you think it means. Yes, bonkers. Bonkers, eh? So there's a couple of great comments going in, which is fantastic. I can see them popping up. That could be the answer. That could be the answer. Let's just give it a moment and I'll give you the answer and put it into a sentence for you. So let's give it five, four, three, two, one. Bonkers does mean crazy. Got it. Bonkers does mean crazy. It, But you can use it in a couple of different ways. You can do it when referring to something or you can use it in the way that I use it mostly uh which is like a surprise about something that's happened so i would use ah oh, that's bonkers as if the situation that someone's just told you is a bit of a surprise so for example maybe uh your best friend has split up with his partner or her partner suddenly and it comes as a surprise and someone tells you and you'll be like oh that's bonkers i didn't know that happened so that's how I would use bonkers personally. That's my my way of using it. So there's the first one for you. How about then we go to a different word, which is one that I have to use a lot at the minute because I'm a dad, and that's more of a more of a difference between British and American, to be honest. Not so much of a slang, but the word nappy. Do you know what nappy means? What's a nappy? What's a nappy? Do you know? You can tell me in the comments. If you think you know, I'm going to give it a few moments to give you a chance to answer. So, yeah, this one's not so much slang. This is more of just a British word for an item. What do you think it means? Very important for parents out there. Sleepy, that's a great guess. It's not sleepy, I'm afraid. Nice try. But, ah, so I see what you're saying. And we can talk about an actual uh, slang word there. We can talk about that afterwards. But the word nappy actually means something slightly differently. That's really interesting. That's a really good try. So I'm going to give it five, four, three, two, one. N a nappy is actually the British term for a diaper. A nappy is just the British term for a diaper, actually. So what a baby wears. Um, but what you're trying to say is also correct in a different sense. So a nap is indeed a sleep that you have in the middle of the day. And that is a nice British term to lead on to, a nap. Did you have a nap today? Tell me in the comments. I'd love to know. I wanted to have a nap. I was pretty tired today. It was very busy. But yeah, a nap. I like it. I like it a lot. That's great. Fantastic job. How about another word then? How about the word mm, posh? Posh. Do you know what the word posh means? Posh. Posh. What do you think the word posh means? Posh. 
just to refer, nappy equals diaper, diaper, same as diaper. And then at to nap, to nap is like a, a mini sleep, yeah. I've got a mini sleep, a quick sleep, maybe it's better. But what do you think posh means? Posh. Put to a nap. Oh dear. Let's do that again. But yeah, posh. What do you think posh means? Posh. Mm. Posh. Someone's put in a comment, luxurious. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. What do you think? Posh. So posh is used in reference to, it can be in reference to items. It can be in reference to people as well. So if it's in reference to people, what do you think it means if you're posh? Or someone is posh. Thank you very much for the comments. I appreciate that. These are good efforts for sure. So posh would refer to something that costs a lot of money, basically. And we use posh when we refer to someone of a higher or what we'd see as a richer person. And someone who talks with maybe a, a more... A certain style of accent, let's put it that way. We do have, uh, we do refer to a posh accent within English, and maybe those people feel that that shows them as a higher class. So maybe you've heard of posh before, but yeah, that is one nice little word there that you may have heard of. Fancy, mm, yeah, kind of. I can understand why you've said that for sure, but not quite fancy. That's a good guess though. Uh, fancy is a little different, but fancy does mean like um, high quality. I'd say more like high quality. Hmm. It can be negative, though, when people use fancy as well. Yeah, people can use it in a negative way. Posh, posh when referring to an object, it's usually in a positive way. But when referring to a person can be seen very negatively. So, yeah, just something to watch out for if you hear anyone using that word. OK, nice job so far. Is there any British slang that you know? Chuck it in the comments. I'd love to see. And then maybe we could discuss uh, about some of those other words to so that everyone finds out what they mean. OK, how about then? How about then? Let's go to a bit of an easier one, one that more people know about. How about the word blinding? Blinding. Do you know what the word blinding means? Blinding. Uh, blinding. What do you think that means? As a slang term, blinding. It's blinding. If something is blinding. Nope. If something is blinding, what do you think? I'm going to group a bunch of words in this one. I'm going to group a bunch of words in this one. Blinding. It links to something that we've done already before um, on a previous live stream that didn't work very well. So maybe that gives you a little tip. What do you think blinding means? Thank you very much. If you're just switching in, we're doing some of our, we're doing my top 10 British slang that I used to use a lot when I was at home, when I was in England. I wonder if you know any of these terms. So we've done the words. Uh, we've done the words bonkers. Uh, we did the word nappy. That's one that I use a lot these days. And we did the word, we are doing the word blinding. And we did the word posh as well. So yeah, blinding. And we're going to, we're going to pull all these together, a bunch of words here. So blinding is the same as lush, basically. Blinding is the same as lush, okay? Or great, or fantastic. Or here are some nice, some other words, some other British words that are also quite nice and fit in this. So you could use the word ace. Ace we use quite a lot. Terrific, uh, wicked, class, 
I'm going to put them all into the chat for you so you can check them out. Uh, what was that nice one I had a minute ago in my head? Well, anyway, here's a bunch of them. So Blind is like lush, ace, terrific, wicked, class, cracking, cracking. So these all words basically meaning great or good or fantastic. They're all used in a positive way. Yes. Have you heard of any of these ones before? Ace or terrific? Maybe terrific is probably one of the more popular ones. Wicked. I know people know this one. Uh, Kraken's an interesting one. Kraken's an interesting one. But they, yeah, they both, they all mean uh, the same thing. They all mean great or good, above good, basically. I always kind of think of it. Good or above. That's right. So is there any other words you've heard of? And if you haven't, let's go on to the next one. How about one that maybe you've definitely heard of? Do you know what the word cuppa means? Many British people use it. Cuppa. What do you think cuppa means? Many British people use this one. Cuppa. What do you think cuppa means? Maybe that was a little hint. Cuppa, yeah. It's really, really popular. It's used a lot in Britain. Me and my uh, family used it a lot. Cuppa. Cuppa, what do you think? And five, four, three, two, one. As there's some great comments coming in. And cuppa is basically, yeah, cup of. Cup of, usually used with tea, obviously. Being British, we have to drink tea by law. So we drink a lot of it. So cup of, a cup of tea. I'll have a cup of tea. I'll have a cup of tea. So that's quite that's quite an interesting. Let's go over that one. So I'm going to type in a sentence. Maybe if you want to practice, you're more than welcome to. I'll have a cup of tea. But that's the way we learn it when we read it for the first time. I'll have a cup of tea. But we already know that cup and of are going to go together. So let's look at it there. I'll have a cup of tea. I'll have a cup of tea. Now, let's, we're going to make it even more, even more condensed. I'll have. I'll have a. I'll have a cup of tea. I'll have a cup of tea. I'll have a cup of tea. It's very, very natural. I'll have a cup of tea. Do you guys like tea? Tell me in the chat. I'd love to know. I'll have a cup of tea. Av. Av. I'll have a cup of tea. Mum, I'll have a cup of tea. Used to, my, my, me and my family, it's like the first thing we do when we get together. Someone puts the kettle on, chucks, uh, gets um, a teapot ready, gets a cosy on the top of it. Do you know what a tea cosy is? A tea cosy. Maybe this is just a British thing, to be honest. But it's like this knitted, mostly, <laughs> quite often, the old style is like a knitted uh, jumper, if you want, for a teapot. But, yeah, uh, this is the thing that keeps the av, yeah, av. I'll have a cup of tea. I'll have a. We often, like, condense sentences, native speakers do, to make it more convenient when we talk um now i'll have a cup of tea is obviously fine as well there's nothing wrong with that um just sounds a little bit more natural if you're condensing it a bit more but then that could also it depends what situation it's very informal style so watch out for that but yeah it's very very common and a tea cozy is like i said the jumper that you put on the teapot so the tea what we do in England usually is we put some tea bags in a separate uh, teapot and the hot water in, and then it um, stews, <laughs> funny enough, it stews in the pot and, you know, gr gradually the tea comes together. And to keep it warm, we put a tea cozy on the top. It's literally like a jumper for a teapot. It's great. It's really classic British, I think. I don't know. Have, do you guys use tea cozies? Maybe everyone else does. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it anywhere else, though. OK, let's go on to the next one anyway. How about the word? 
Finally, finally indeed, yeah, finally managed to start it up. How about the word, let's try, gander. Do you know what gander means? Have a gander. Have a gander. What do you think this phrase, what do you think this phrase means? To have a gander. To have a gander. What do you think? My room feels really dark in the camera. Maybe, I don't know where my light switch is. Never mind. To have a gander. To have a gander. What do you think it means? Gander is usually referring to uh, a bird. But what do you think it means in British English? To have a gander. Have you seen the, have you heard about the new um, supermarket opening up? No, I'm going to go and have a gander now. I'm going to go and have a gander now. What is this? I'm going to go and have a gander now. What do you think it means? I'm going to go and have a gander now. That's great. Yes. Yes. The last comment that went in. Fantastic job. Let's talk about that. So to have a gander does mean to take a look. That's right. To take a look at something. So, yeah, to take a look. You can have a gander. Yeah, this is maybe. Yeah, not to pick up something. Nice try, though. Very, very nice try. No, just it does mean to have a look at something. So, for example, right now you're having a gander at my live stream here. You're having a gander at my live stream. Yes. Thank you very much for having a gander at my live stream. I hope that this is going to be useful for a lot of you. Some British slang here for you today. OK, this is wonderful, fantastic work. So how about the word hmm, cheeky? Cheeky. What do you think cheeky is? This is a really nice one. Let me quickly put have a gander. Means to have a look. There we go. Oh, what do you think cheeky means? Cheeky, if someone's cheeky, what do you think? A cheeky person, someone who is cheeky. Do you know any cheeky people? Not louder, that's a great try. Try and tell me in the comments. Someone who is cheeky. Do you know any cheeky people? What do you think? <laughs> Pretty sure all of my live streams start. The first one I ever do, the first one I did on, on Instagram was like a quiz kind of thing. This is kind of like a quiz, I suppose. I know it doesn't mean louder, but cheeky. What do you think it means? It's a nice word. It's used to describe. Any gander even. I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, cheeky, basically, it means someone who is disrespectful. It's usually used towards kids, but a lot of older people also use it to other, other people that they know, someone who is slightly rude to them. But it's used a lot with kids. It's used a lot. With kids. A cheeky monkey. Yeah, very good, SI. So, yeah, so that's that's a phrase that's used quite a lot. I like that. Nice, tr nice choice. If you know a cheeky monkey or two. Yeah. So if someone isn't very kind, isn't is being a little disrespectful. So let's talk about that, though. That's a great choice. There's Sab there. Cheeky Nando's is a little different, a little different. So there's two ways you can use cheeky. Cheeky is usually used to mean someone who's disrespectful, but a cheeky something that you get means like a, a sly you slyly get something so for example cheeky nando's which has gone in means they're going to nando's slyly to pick it up and have some food yeah uh yeah cheeky can be used in a few different ways it's nice i like the phrase it's good how about skive let's move on to skive skive do you know what skive means Skype, someone who skives or a skiver. Someone who is skiving. What do you think it means? I'd love to know. Tell me in the comments. If you have any questions, fire them in as well. I'll try and answer as many as I can while I'm here. I'm a skive. What do you think? Skive. Skive. 
if someone is skiving, do you think it's good or do you think it's bad as well? You can tell me that in the comments. The word skive. For example, at work, maybe someone is skiving. Skydiving is a good guess. Not skydiving, I'm afraid. Nice try, though. It does make sense what you're saying, for sure, because obviously the first part of the word. But if someone is skiving at work, or in general, they could be with whatever you're doing with them, but it usually refers to work. I will tell you that it is a negative thing. It is not a good thing when someone is skiving. What do you think? Avoid oh, you're super close. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the information now. I'm gonna give you the answer. Skive five, four, three, two, one. Skive is someone who is lazy, who isn't doing anything, who is avoiding work. So it, yeah, it's a really nice term to skive. It means to avoid doing something. To be lazy. To not do what they're meant to be doing. I try my best not to skive, but I have got lots of jobs to do. But I wanted to bring you this today to try and um, try something new, see how it goes, see if we can help many people again. But yeah, skive. I like that word. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, how about this then? Okay, we're going to go crazy one now, okay? This is going to be a little bit more difficult. <laughs> this is really difficult. I mean, this is not one of the most common ones. I'm not going to lie to you, but it is a funny one. I want to give it to you. Okay, ready? It's monkeys. What do you think it means? It's monkeys. This is a good one. <laughs> It's monkeys. Oh, it's monkeys. What do you think it means? It's so British. That's crazy. It's monkeys. What do you think it means? I wonder, can you get it? I wonder if I can flip my camera somewhere. Maybe not now, but next time. It's monkeys. Mate, it's monkeys. What do you think? It's monkeys today. It's monkeys. <laughs> I don't know. That's fair enough. Cute? No. I'm afraid not. Not cute. Don't call someone a monkey. Man, that'd be crazy. Don't do that. I think maybe they're going to be a little offended if you say that someone's a monkey. Looks like a monkey. <laughs> In, in many different ways, yeah, I'd be very careful with that. But especially don't go up to a lady and say you look like a monkey. Maybe they'll be very disappointed. <laughs> no, I'm going to say, okay, I'll give you a top up to it. It's monkeys outside. It's monkeys outside. What do you think it means? It's monkeys outside. Does that help you in any way? This is going to be an interesting one, maybe. It's monkeys outside. What do you think? It's a bit monkeys outside, isn't it? Better get my scarf, get my coat on. It's a bit monkeys outside. Give you a couple of clues there. Maybe you can get it. Dangerous is a good guess. Not dangerous. Nice try. Raining, not raining. Cold. Yes, it is cold. Monkeys means very cold. It's monkeys, guys, monkeys. I have no idea why, where we get this kind of thing from, but yeah. It's monkeys outside. I'm going to have to find out that one. I've got to find out that one. That's a great phrase, so I'd love to know where it comes from. So, yeah, chili. Chili is a lovely word as well. I love that. It's monkeys outside. We're going to use, well, I'm going to put chili as the word. Chili is a nice word. Yeah. Blimey, I use that a lot as well. Yeah, let's do that one next then. Blimey, what does blimey mean? Yeah, I know, weird one, isn't it? It's monkeys outside. I've got a couple of other 
we've got some absolute nonsense. Some of the some British slang is so random. So I'm going to bring chuck in some of those at some point. What do you think blimey means? Blimey. I use this one super loads a lot, really a lot. Hi, buddy. Great to see you here. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you being in here. So, yeah, blimey. What do you think? Blimey. God, blimey. Core, blimey. That is so British. Core, blimey. I say that because I'm not in England anymore. So I'm kind of like reminiscing a little bit about these kind of phrases. It just reminds me of being at home. Core, blimey. Core, blimey. Is that the time? What do you think it means? Blimey, if you think you know, chuck it in the chat. Not sad. That's a great try. I can understand why you've said that as well. God, blimey. It's a bit late today, isn't it? God, blimey. So, I'm going to tell you in five, four, three, two, one. Blimey means surprised or astonished that's a great that's a great i love that hk hi great to see you astonished is a really nice word so we're going to put that as the uh, definition astonished or surprised <gasps> blimey what whoa like the, you know many people have different words than they but uh i use blimey god blimey blimey what oh wow wow if it's something really shocks me in that one like minute I'm definitely using this word. Blimey, I love it. Okay, then. That's great. That's really, really great. Okay, I've got another one. That's fine. Oh, my God. That's a good one, but let's try that. Uh, it's a bit difficult. Let's go to – let's let's kind of go backwards a bit. Let's go backwards a bit and go to something a bit more basic, like Lou. Lou. What do you think Lou means? Lou. British slang is generally difficult, guys, by the way. So if you don't get many of these, don't worry about it. This is just about learning something new. To go to the loo. So, yeah, someone's already chucked it in already. I need to go to the loo. Or there's a couple of words for this. Uh, there's a couple of words for this for sure. So we've got loo. I'm going to give you three. Loo, John, or lav. Lavatory. Maybe you haven't heard lavatory before. This is a, a really old style term. Lou, the John, or, or lav. So these all mean toilet, obviously. And lav, they all mean toilet. But yeah, those terms you might hear. The WC as well, wall closet. But that's quite really rare these days. You'll see it. You'll probably see. You got it, snow, snow. You'll see this uh, WC. Maybe you see it you know, wherever you are, actually. It's quite a common term. Um, but it basically refers to water closet, if you didn't know. That's what it means. Uh, but, yeah, WC is – you do see it on quite a few toilets in England, if you're over there. Okay. So that was an easy one out of the way. So let's go – Oh, okay, yeah, sure. We're going to do some food terms, okay? So some of them might be like a difference between American and British, and some of them might be completely obscure. So for like the first one, let's go for something easy. For example, biscuits. Okay, what's biscuits? This is this. That's quite an easy one, isn't it? Biscuits. What are biscuits? Maybe you can give me a different word for biscuits. What do you think? We're going to go through We're going to bash through a bunch of stuff here. Biscuits. What do you think biscuits are? Biscuits. Tell me in the comments if you think you know. We're going to fire through some bits of slang here. As soon as they pop up, as soon as the answers pop up in the comments, in the live chat. Sorry, comments. There's not comments here. In the live chat, then we'll fire on to the next one, okay? So if you think you know what the American term for is for biscuits... There we go. Cookies. Great. Biscuits, cookies. They're both the same. Wonderful. But I, you know what? I'd say cookies are a little different in England. 
biscuits equals cookies. Um, how about mm, ah okay? How about uh, what do you call that? Uh, how about candy floss? Candy floss. Do you know? What do you think candy floss is? Type quick enough, I don't think. Candy floss. What do you think? Candy floss. Do you know what candy floss is? Yo, Tara, nice to see you. It's not ice cream. It's your sweet, though. Your cotton candy. There we go. There we go. Candy floss equals cotton candy. You got it. You nailed it. Nice work. Okay, what about the next one? Cotton candy. That's right. You got it, guys. Oh, nice work. I'm fun. I'm really impressed. How about a fairy cake then? What's a fairy cake? Uh, I do do live streams on Hello, yeah, but not today. Sunday and Monday for me on that. I do live streams on Hello. I do live streams on Instagram. I'm crazy. <laughs> All in my free time. Or... Not free time as it would be. What do you think a fairy cake is? A fairy cake. If you know what a fairy is, it sounds kind of weird. Easy. Easy. Now knows what it is. What do you think? Fairy cake. I'm glad. That's really good news that it's easy. It means you know what it is. That's really fantastic. Ice sugar cake. Depends what you call a sugar cake, to be honest. I've tried sugar, you know, sugar cake's kind of a weird one. I know many people using the word sugar cake and for different things, so it's a bit difficult for me to answer that. It's not cheesecake. The fairy cake does mean cupcake. You got it spot on. Cupcake it is. It is a cupcake. Okay, here's a great one for you then. Here's a really good one. What is eggy bread? Oh, eggy bread. What do you think it means, eggy bread? It literally is what it says on the tin. Our oh, fairy doesn't mean easy, unfortunately, no. Fairy cake doesn't mean easy. No, I see. I understand what you're saying, though. Uh, unlucky. Nice try, though. What do you think eggy bread is? Eggy bread. You might eat it in the morning. It's super popular. It's so popular. In England, we say eggy bread, but you probably know it everywhere else in the world as one other thing. Eating in the morning is bread. It involves bread. It involves eggs. What do you think? Dance, 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 dance. That's a great guess, Tara, but it's not that, I'm afraid. It's not scrambled egg. These are great guesses, though. I put the wrong thing, actually. I'm going to just edit that. Okay, it's ready to roll. It is French toast. <gasps> yeah, French toast. French toast. Are you a fan of French toast? I love it. I think it's good. Very tasty. <sighs> Okay, well, here we go. We're going to go for a, a beast. Maybe most people know this one. This is quite a popular one. Aubergine. What's an aubergine? Great word. I love the word aubergine. Nice French word. Aubergine. What do you think it is? Aubergine. Eggplant, eggplant. Yes, it is. It's an eggplant. Yes, it is. And we'll do... I mean, two more of these, and then we'll move on to the rest of the British slang. How about then? Should we go associated with food? What do you think? What is cutlery? And what is the American term is the more important part of this cutlery. What do you think the American term is? Because you'll hear the American term in films. Cutlery isn't really used so much, but it's definitely used in England. We don't use anything but cutlery. What is it, first of all? Uh, 
Oh, it's a good one then. If people don't know, that means some we all learn, you know. So that's the most important thing, I think. Uh, what do you call that thing? Oh, yeah, that one. There we go. Cutlery. You you use it every day. I promise you that. You use it every day, cutlery. It's very very useful. You need to. Ha if you don't use it, you're you're a bit. There's a bit of a problem because you can't do something that you have to do every day without it. So I'm going to tell you in five, four, three, two, one. It is knife, spoon, fork, anything you use to eat food. Tools for eating. Yes, Christina, you got it. Cutlery, silverware. Silverware is the American term, more American term I've heard. Um, utensils. Utensils is quite broad, isn't it, though? Silverware referring just to mainly the bits we use to eat the food with, really. But, yeah, silverware. And then last, last one is... Do we get difficult? No. A trolley. What's a trolley? You need this. Mm, 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 mm. A trolley. What do you think a trolley is? It's a trolley. Yeah, look at that. A speed. Fantastic. You need a trolley, otherwise you can't collect your food. It's very, very important, isn't it? A trolley. So, yeah, that's what we have, trolley. So that's a bunch of American and British words surrounding food, though, those ones are. But let's go on. Let's go back to the main topic, which is British slang. So this is where it becomes a little tough, I think. British slang is a little difficult. So. Christmas is coming. I'm excited for that. OK, let's give it a go for. OK, yeah, definitely. I use that a lot. Chuffed. What do you think chuffed means? Chuffed. What do you think chuffed means? Chuffed is a word. I use this a lot, to be honest. Uh, I will say this. Um, it's a term that I've, I've heard is not really used. It can't really be translated into Japanese as such maybe it's you know you don't really show this emotion that often if you live in japan that's what i've heard i don't know for sure but i've never seen anyone show this emotion really uh yeah chuffed what do you think mainly the third there's two there's two meanings to it but yeah mainly the first side of it chuffed what do you think i'm gonna give you the answer pretty soon you guys are doing wonderful i really appreciate your being here and tune in. I hope this is useful. Maybe we can do something a bit different next time. This is why I've always started live streams on a new channel. This style of thing. Anyway, we're going to go five, four, three, two, one. Chuffed. It basically means proud. Proud. When you're really proud of something or someone. And you want to show, oh, I'm, really I'm really chuffed that that happened. I'm really chuffed of my, for example... Your daughter wins a race at the school sports day. I'm so chuffed. She did great. But it can also mean like extremely glad that something happened. They can be linked, those two, can't they? Obviously, you'll be glad and proud at the same time. You'll be glad about that thing happening. Mm. Okay, here's a funny one then. We'll chuck in a funny one now. What does it mean to know your onions? Do you know your onions? <laughs> it's absolute nonsense, let's be honest. Do you know your onion? No, do you know your onion? Oh, that's not good. What do you think? Not, no, what does know your onions mean? Do you know? Do you know your onions? I'd love to know. Budget. It's not to do a budget. That's a great guess, though. To know your onions. I can really understand what you're saying there as well. That makes so much sense to me. <laughs> to know your onions about something. To know your onions about something. 
I will say this is not like one of the most frequently used phrases that I've ever heard, um, but it is used. I'd say it's an older phrase. Very specific area probably as well. To know your onions. Mm, kind of. That's a great guess, Tara. Capability. It's not secret, though, unfortunately. And I'm going to tell you the answer in five, four, three, two, one. The answer is how knowledgeable you are about something, how much you know something about a certain topic. For example, if we talk about football, I know my onions about football. I know a lot about football. Weird phrase, yeah? There's so many weird phrases. I mean, we're not even touching on Cockney, and that's just another kettle of fish. Oh, dear, that's going to have to be the next one, isn't it? Another kettle of fish. I don't know if this is specifically Britain, but anyway. What do you think another kettle of fish means? God, what nonsense. What's another kettle of fish? <laughs> nonsense, isn't it? I'm going to give you a word for nonsense as well next, but we're not going to go over it. We're not going to. Uh... It's not lie. That's a good guess, though. It's not lie. Another kettle of fish. What do you think? If uh, what did I just say then? I said something is another kettle of fish. OTT, not OTT, that's another good guess. I'm going to give you the answer right now. Another kettle of fish is something that's different to what you're talking about. Oof. These ones are pretty mind-blowing, to be honest with you, so we're going to have to come away from these a little bit, I think. These could kill. Yeah, very weird, Christina, 100% weird. That is British English in a nutshell, to be honest. It is a little bit weird, for sure. Especially if you've been practicing American, uh, we have a lot of phrases that really don't mean anything. Like this, another kettle of fish. Okay, let's go on to something else then. I was thinking about the nice photos of people which have been used. A few application to read. Mm hmm Okay. Mm. So, yeah. It just means that something's different to what you're actually talking about at that given time. Okay, 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 okay. Let's go a bit easier then. Hoover. What's a Hoover? Do you know? What is a Hoover? Have you ever used a Hoover? If you haven't, it's a big problem. But what do you think Hoover means? Hoover. Hoover. Have you used a Hoover? I hope so. Everyone should have used one at least once in their life. That's right. Hoover equals vacuum. It does. Indeed equal vacuum. Great job there in the comments. Okay, how about... Um... Oh, okay, we're going to do one more food one, which I meant to... That was the one I reasoned why I wanted to talk about. Bangers. What are bangers? They're a type of food. I'll give you that one clue. Bangers. What are bangers? I'm going to give you a nice word for something in a second as well. I've got two really nice ones. One of them is really difficult. One of them is... A very nice word you can use. I think it'll be good for kids to learn. But this one, bangers, is a type of food. What are bangers? Actually, bangers can be used in a couple of different ways, but I'm going to tell you the food one today. Bangers. What are bangers? You've probably eaten bangers at some point in your life. Uh, many people, bangers are involved in a full English breakfast. I don't know if that gives you any hints whatsoever. If you even know what full English breakfast is, <laughs> that's the key thing. Bangers does equal sausage. You got it. You nailed it. Spot on. Bangers equals sausage or sausages.
And how about bum, 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 bum. Well, I said I was going to give you something that's good. Oh, yeah. Scrummy. I think this is a cute word. Scrummy. I don't know about you guys. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. What's scrummy mean? Scrummy. Oh, pigs in blankets. Man, yeah, they're good, aren't they? Pigs in blankets are awesome. Christmas is coming as well. Traditional time for pigs in blankets. If you don't know what pigs in blankets are, they're sausages wrapped in bacon. Awesome. If you haven't tried it, you've got to try it. They're so good. Crumble, nope. Scrummy. Scrummy. What do you think scrummy means? It's an emotion. Let's put it that way. Uh, it's a reaction to something, I'd say, more so than an emotion. The reaction to something. Not messy. Nice try, though. These are really good attempts. Scrummy means it's a word that you can use every day. It's not sad, but you can teach someone this. It's, it's a really cute word, I think. It means delicious. That's scrummy, that is. That's tasty. That's delicious. If you want to learn something, if you want a kid to learn something a bit different, like then just delicious, yummy, tasty. Scrummy is a nice word. Scrummy is a really good uh, word. Mm, yeah. I think it's cute. Pigs in blankets is easy and scrummy. Yeah, totally. I completely agree. Roast potatoes, man. I want some roast potatoes desperately. I miss roast potatoes. I miss gravy. Oh, gravy's good. Christmas is coming, so this is a tough time of year, I think. You know, all I can get here is KFC chicken. <laughs> but it's a special KFC here, yeah? Special... Uh, event in japan i should do it one year maybe this is the year okay and we're going to begin to finish up now i don't know we've probably gone over 10 at some point i haven't really been counting i'm going to be 100 percent honest um so let's go to another one uh, which is going to be oh yeah, yeah yeah of course i use that one all the time i forgot about that one it's just coming to my mind gutted what does gutted mean super gutted about that death Absolutely gutted. Gutted that happened. Gutted. Use this so much, especially when I'm at home. I found that when I'm teaching, though, I don't use so many of these terms. I think I'm, I try to be as clear as possible when I speak. You probably hear blimey because that's just reactionary and lush because it's my word for great and we use the word great or something all the time. So. But gutted, I don't know if I use that so often when I teach, but I definitely do when I'm having informal conversations with people, for sure. It's like one of my top 10 words, I'd probably say. Gutted, what do you think it means? Super gutted that happened. That sucks, I'm gutted. <sighs> Here we go. I'm going to tell you in five, four, three, two, one. Gutted means devastated. Devastated. Very sad about something happening. Close to fail. You're pretty close, Christina. Nice try. I guess there's a little lag because I think I put in my comment before other people got a chance to comment then. Uh, but yeah, it means devastated. Sad. Hmm. What has made you devastated today or what has made you chuffed today? Tell me in the comments. I'd love to know. Try and use some of these words in a sentence if you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much. If you just joined, I really appreciate you being here. We've gone over a bunch of words already, which is great. We've done really well, I think. We're 40, 50 minutes in. We're really firing through them at the minute, which is really wonderful. So how about, let's go on to a couple more before we finish off. How about, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, of course. To croak it. Croak it. What do you think to croak it means? To croak it. 
it's not a nice phrase. It can be quite a sad thing, a very sad thing, quite a very sad thing to happen when somebody croaks it. There's been a little, when somebody croaks it, my mum has just croaked it. I'm gutted. You'd be a bit more emotional than that. Cheers, I really appreciate that. Nice use of the word. Really, really nice use of the word. Disappoint? Not quite. Close, though. You would be disappointed if it happened. It's like something that happens to someone. What do you think? Croak it. To croak it. Three, two, one. It means to die. It's kind of a sad term, isn't it? When someone croaks it. It is a bit disappointing in term, isn't it? So we're going to liven up the mood a bit with a couple of good ones. Good ones to end on, which is going to be, what does it mean to kick back? To kick back. What do you think to kick back means? This is a really nice phrase. You can use this every day. You can use this a lot. This is a really, really good phrase. Really nice, really natural. Not to hold back. That's a really good try. It's not to hold back, but it's a really nice phrase. I really suggest to use this one to kick back. I'm going to put a nice phrasal verb in with this one. I like to kick back on the weekends. I have my days off on Sunday, Monday, and I kick back on those days. I don't, but... I don't kick back. I do. I do have my days off on those days, but I don't kick back on those days. I'm too busy. My neighbour croaked it in the, it this morning. Yeah, that's a good sentence. Fantastic job. Nice usage. To kick back. Three, two, one. Here we go. Boom. It means to relax, to chill out. I'm going to kick back. Oh, I'm going to kick back this weekend. I'm not going to do anything. Just going to chill out. I'm going to relax. I'm going to kick back. I'm going to kick back. Did you kick back this weekend? Last weekend, should I say? The weekend that's just gone. Did you kick back? What do you think? And guys, obviously, all you guys learn, or most of you, I imagine, learn American English. So I just want to chuck in an extra word that I want you to know. It's a really important one, and another one you can use regularly. It's the word fortnight which means two weeks. Instead of saying it's two weeks away, we usually say it's a fortnight away. Fortnight. Not as in the computer game, yeah. But, yeah, this means two weeks. In two weeks or previously two weeks. Two weeks ago, two weeks until fortnight. A fortnight. I'm going on holiday in a fortnight. Ah, a fortnight ago, I lost my wallet, you know. Fortnite's a really nice phrase. Really nice word, sorry. Really nice word to use. And it sums up what you want to say pretty quickly. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. And then here's a really, really nice one. What, what would you say the idiot box is? What is the idiot box? What is the idiot box? Have you ever, I'm sure some of you have used the idiot box. You have probably watched the idiot box. It's a really nice phrase. What, what do you think the idiot box is? It is the TV. Great job. The idiot box is the TV. Because, like, people, obviously, they think that we kind of neutralize some cells in our brains by watching the TV all the time, you know, and lose a bit of our our senses by just constantly watching tv so yeah the idiot box you're currently watching an idiot on the idiot box right now if you're watching me on your phone or laptop double idiot <laughs> okay that's a nice one i really like that one as well okay what about then hmm i had a good one earlier as well Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you two words. 
in one here. One word that I use and one word that other people use. So it's quite common to hear the word someone being called an airhead. What do you think airhead means? I don't use airhead. I use a different word. I use a fairy. If you call someone a fairy or an airhead, what do you think that means? That guy's a bit of an airhead. She's a bit of a fairy. Airhead or fairy? So you can say, that's a nice try at that sentence. Instead of that, you can say, I, if you want to use watch, a uh, was, you shouldn't really use um, every day. But you can, I don't know, you can in a sense, but it depends. Egghead. <laughs> uh, egghead reminds me of Sonic. Dr. Robotnik is also called it Egghead. So I was watching the... Idiot box last night is fine. Or because you're going to use every day, or it should be every night, by the way. If you want to use every night, that's fine. You can say, I watch, I watch the, what did we say? I watched the idiot box I put. Sorry, it's idiot box, yeah. I just miss, miss word. I watch the idiot box every night. So if you're talking about something that is uh, regular, you should use the base of the word, base of the verb, more so than the ing form. So I was watching the idiot box last night because you're talking about the past. You use war, and if you're using so frequently, so now you're basically on the money there. On the money means you got it correct or I said I've said a few of these actually let's chuck those in there as well so I've said on the money and I've also said um, hit the nail on the head these are a couple of other nice phrases yeah which equals you got it you're correct okay so you're on the money there it can mean idiot yeah for sure an airhead slash a fairy can mean idiot. I prefer for it to mean uh, like someone who isn't is spacing out. So I think it's a bit polite to say that way. Someone who's spacing out a bit, like um, is daydreaming. Spacing out means daydreaming. So I prefer to think of it like that instead. I think that's a nicer way to put it. Because idiot's quite harsh, quite strong word. Uh, so, yeah, watch when you use that. But, yeah, fairy, I really like fairy the most. Uh, you know, like someone who isn't quite there, isn't quite with the conversation, should I say. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I'm referring to some work I've made earlier, some notes I put down, if you're wondering why I'm looking down. Um, okay, I've got one that's a nice one. Actually, I put a post out I, on my podcast. I did something with clothing phrasal verbs, <clears throat> and we used the word kick off. So if you watch that, you probably know what this means, kick off. What do you think kick off means? I'm going to give you a second meaning for this today. So to kick off, it refers to clothes. What do you think you're doing if you kick something off? So, okay, there's a third meaning there as well. 100% that. I was just going to concentrate on two, but we can include that now you've mentioned it. To kick off can mean to start to do something. Sure. That's great. Nice job. When referred to throwing to clothes, the hair head man, man kind of doesn't have a brain, does it? Yeah. <laughs> Kind of, you could think of it like that. No, well, that's like the logical meaning to it, isn't it? Airhead means there's nothing in there. It's just air. So, yeah, I suppose in America they use meathead. So it's kind of similar. Not exactly similar, but kind of similar. A synonym, I'd say. Uh, so to kick off can mean to start to do something. It can, in refer reference to clothes, if you kick off your shoes, that means you're removing them quickly. Okay, so kick off your shoes, it means to remove shoes quickly. 
And then also, when something kicks off, that means that there's an argument or a fight it has is starting. Or to give you a really nice, a really nice, uh, an argument, a fight, give you a really British term, or a quarrel. That's so British. So kickoff has quite a few different meanings. Uh, I've just chucked them in the chat there. If you're if you're watching, guys, please check out the chat. It's got all of your information in there. All of the um, words we've gone over and the definition. So make sure you're checking that out. If you're making notes, there's a useful place for you to go. But yeah, there's many great terms in there. Many, 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 many. So, yeah, watch out for people who are kicking off. You don't want to be around, surrounded by people who are kicking off, of course. Yeah. And there's obviously... Is there any British slang that you guys know? I really want to know. I want to know what comes out of England and goes elsewhere. What actually is received by other people. Because I only know, like, the stuff that I... See, British slang is very interesting. It's very regional specific. That's why I always say, like, slang is the last 5% of language. You know, we don't really need to worry about it unless we're doing it for fun, like some of these terms. Because a lot of it is the next phrase that I'm going to put in is gobbledygook. Gobble. I don't know if I can spell it, though. The gook is such random spelling. Definitely spell it wrong. There we go. Oh, look at that. My dictionary has it. It means nonsense. And so, yeah, a lot of slang is nonsense, you know. So, um, it is gobble, gobbledygook. Slang is gobbledygook, and it's nonsense, and it's really specific to each region. So I really recommend it's not like the most important thing. I actually suggest it's not useful to use, to be honest, but it's useful to know about. So when you hear, it's more important that you understand what's being said to you in terms of slang than using it, because the problem with slang is, is like I said, it's very regional, it's very specific, and even to native speakers might not understand what each person is saying you know so because of that i don't think it's actually useful to use i think it's useful to know about so that when you hear it you understand and you can respond you know these are really important things uh yeah so we're going to be slowing up now because we're on an hour plus it's nearly midnight here already Ooh. but we've done well don't we we've got some great words in there I really appreciate if you stayed for a long time. That's really, really wonderful. Uh, and there's another one. Gobbledygook or codswallop. I forgot about that one. Codswallop also means nonsense. As you can tell, look at the word. It's crazy. Nonsense. Yep. So, yeah, we've got a bunch of them. We've got a bunch of great words in here. I'm going to leave you with one last one, and I'm trying to pick out of a couple. So what's going to be the most useful for you? Oh, here's one that you may not have a term for. So that's why I'm going to add it in here. What do you think fluke means? Fluke, a fluke. Something is a fluke. Something is a fluke. If something is a fluke, what do you think it means? you're really close now you're really close that's a great guess really really close if something is a fluke i'm going to add your bit in at the end to see how it ties in because what it can mean is a positive and a negative but it's Yeah, basically, it's something that happens by chance. A fluke is something that happens by chance. So but it's used a lot in, a, in the terms of lucky, something good happening, more so than negative. It can be used in the negative, obviously, to, like, describe something that happens unluckily. Oh, that was just a fluke. 
Uh, it doesn't happen often, you know, but, but yeah, it's mainly used in a positive sense. That's great. I'm really happy you found something new. Fluke is a really nice word. It's kind of a word that we don't really have much to fill in that gap for that kind of thing. So I'm glad I could get the chance to add that in here. If you're looking for new words, but ones that could be useful for you, here's a nice one as well. Faff. Oh, no, I've spelled it wrong. Sorry, it's got a D at the end. Oh, no, sorry, another F. Let's take that one down. Check it in properly. Faff. What do you think faff means? This is used so much in England. This is a really British term. It's about everything, I think. Obviously, they're all British terms. They're British, English, British language. So, <laughs> yes. I'm going to give you the definition. This is a little longer. Not bingo, no. Uh, this is something that so super common word. I guess people do it a lot in England, I guess. Really nice word, though. <coughs> what do you think? Faff. I have a bunch of words. We're just going to fire them out, I think, because I've found some really nice ones that I want to give to you, which I think they're very useful. So faff is to do something that is unnecessary and wastes time. So, for example... People use it in negative when they talk to people. They use it about people. Why are you faffing around? Why are you faffing around? It means like, well, basically, why are you wasting time, to be honest? Like that someone's doing something that is unnecessary at that time. So this happens a lot for me in the morning. When I need to rush to work and I've got to take my kids to school, my daughter's always faffing around. I don't know what she's doing. She's always doing something that doesn't relate to what we need to do in that moment. You know, so that's that's another one there. Faff. Faff is a really good one. I like faff. Okay, let's bang out a couple. So we got flog. Flog means to sell something. Flog something is to sell something. We're going to be going through a bunch. So if you just arrived, I suggest to stay here. This is where you're going to get a bunch of information extremely fast. So the frog is to sell something. How about haggle? Haggle, we're going down the shopping route in a minute. Haggle is another word to bargain. When you bargain for something with someone. So if you go to a marketplace, you might haggle with the salesperson. Haggle and bargain the same. Bargain as in, not as in, <clears throat> bargain means obviously something that's cheap. Hello, buddy, nice to see you. Um, to A bargain is something that's really cheap that you can get on sale. Um, but to bargain means like you discuss with the sales clerk and um, you try to get you try to get a cheaper price. To barter is another term that's similar, isn't it? To barter. To bargain. Or oh, what did I say? Well, to barter. Some of my keys are stopping to work in my computer. I'm obviously hitting them too hard. And to haggle. No bargain. No oh DS no bargain as well. Oh, well, my keys are not on my favor these days. Okay, how about the word hard? Hard's got a couple of meanings. Hard can mean difficult. Maybe you know that one. I'm not sure. I wanted to chuck that one in. I went to the shop. I tried to haggle the price of some shoes, but I couldn't get them to be. It's great, great sentence there, Pablo. Fantastic work there. That's really, really good. So hard can mean difficult. Hard can also mean um, someone who, how can I explain that? That's interesting. Someone who is like a strong person and is willing to, no one will fight. No, everyone's scared of that person. They, they have this aura, this, this macho aura, if you want. Yeah, hard is someone who's very strong. So we get this word hard from. Uh, like hard as nails. Maybe you've heard that phrase, as hard as nails. As hard, as hard as nails. Sorry if the spelling is not coming out nicely. It's because my keys are stopping to work. They're getting a bit sticky on my keyboard. As hard as nails means yeah, someone you don't want to mess with.
I'm going to put strong. It's not really strong, but I'm going to put strong in there so you kind of get a bit of an idea of what it means. Uh, so we did um, nap earlier, yeah? Do you remember? We had nap, uh, which means to sleep. But another nice word is this. Kip. To go for a kip. It means go for a sleep. If you go for a kip. Thank you very much, buddy. I appreciate that a lot. It's just... I am lucky with where I was born, I suppose, and where I moved to. So, yeah, nap, sleep, kip, all the same, to go for a kip. And then how about if you need to, to leg it? It means to run away. If you need to leg it, it means to run very fast or run to somewhere very fast, not just away, sorry, but it, you could leg it to the bus stop in time for the bus, you know, trying to run very fast to the bus. Okay. Naff. Naff means something bad. Something. Right, just, let's just put bad. Naff means bad. It's used in that context, Pablo, to flee for sure. To leg it is to flee away from somewhere. But it just means to run. It means to run very fast somewhere to be honest, uh, it's the clearest way. So, Because you, you can leg it to stuff where it's not a negative situation. So, yeah, naff equals bad. That's naff. Oh, my cup broke. It's, that's super naff. What a naff cup. It's not good. Um, and then off, I'm going to put a couple in here. We're going to do some uh, sickness ones. I've done so many. Whoops. Off colour means to look... I am laughing French. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not very good at French or something. That's a nice sentence. That's really, really good. Nice job. <coughs> so to, if you look off color, you look sick, basically. Look sick. And then if you have the lurgy, the lurgy is like a sickness you have. like a, It's basically a flu. The lurgy. So there's some nice sickness terms for you there. And then we're going to finish up with, I said that about 12 minutes ago. But anyway, let's finish off with a couple of extra ones. A snog. I no idea, to be honest with you. I'm just picking um, ones up as we go. I can research that, though. Maybe there is a common, what I assume is they're actually shortened words more than Maybe it's a suffix thing. Or I'm, I'm not sure. I have to research a lot more information into that. It would be called the lurgy. It's very specific. Uh, because it's like a one, it's like a dreaded thing. It's something you really don't want to get. And people, yeah, it, they're just super, super sick after they get it. So it's got the word the in front of it. because <clears throat> everyone knows what it is. It's not because it's a proper noun. It's just because everyone knows what it means, and it means something very, very bad. Snog. What do you think snog means, guys? Snog means kiss. Very common word for kiss. And Okay, let's go for uh, maybe two more. Mm. Oh, that's a beauty as well. God, there's some really good ones. There's so much that I haven't used in a while. Okay, a couple of really common ones that I use then. Oh, one of them especially is... I, anyone can use it. You know, it's, nothing's exclusive in language. Anyone can use it, but it's obviously used mainly in Britain, Snog. So here's two words I want to give you, which is tad. It's a little... Of something, tad, the little of something. So that's a really good little phrase there. It's normally used tagged on to something else. Uh, it's a tad cold. It's a tad hot. For example, yeah. And then ta. I use ta all the time. It's definitely in my top ten words, and it means thanks. I'll ta for that. Ta, just ta. So it probably is nonsense to all my American co-workers. They probably don't know. They probably think I'm really rude. But yeah, tar just means thanks. 
really, really common. Anyway, we're going to finish there. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope this was useful. There's so much stuff in there, in the chat. If you're in the chat, if you want to take it down, it's all there available for you. I hope you find it useful. For my first session on YouTube, we'll call that we'll call that the end. And then hopefully I'll see you next time when you uh, – hopefully you'll be on again. Hopefully we can have another great chat. And this was not a good way to finish. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for joining. Tough for joining. Very good. Ciao.